Hello viewers and welcome to my channel. Today's topic is retroperitoneal fibrosis. Uh, but before starting this topic, I would like to request you to like, subscribe and share these videos to support this channel, you know. And uh, for more information, you can visit my website, which is www.diseasesandtreatment.com and the link is just below this video in the description. Now I come to the topic, what is uh, retroperitoneal fibrosis, you know. You know, it's a, a, real, uh, it's a very rare condition and it's also known as uh, uh, hormones disease, you know. And it occurs when excess fibrous, uh, uh, fibrous tissue develops in the space behind your stomach and the intestines, which is called as the retroperitoneal area, you know. And the fibrosis is the growth of excess uh, uh, connective tissues, uh, which cause a mass to form, you know. And uh, this is often uh, uh, causes the compression and the blockages of the uh, ureters. Uh, so ureters are the tubes uh, and uh, they connect the kidneys to the bladder, you know. And uh, uh, the tissue masses can block one or both of your ureters. So when the ureter backs up, uh, uh, in the ureters, uh, uh, the urine backs up in the uh, like uh, uh, ureters, you know, uh, the harmful materials can build up uh, in your blood and kidney damage, you know, or can result, you know, and the disease can cause the kidney failure if it's left untreated, you know. And uh, the condition typically starts uh, with inflammation and the fibrosis of the abdominal aorta, you know, aorta, you know, and uh, the abdominal aorta is uh, the large artery that brings the blood from the heart uh, to the areas below your kidneys, you know. And uh, as the disease progresses, you know, it affects the arteries that carry the blood to your legs uh, and the kidneys. And the pain, leg swelling, and the reduction in the kidney function can occur, you know. Okay. Uh, the next thing is what are the symptoms? Well, uh, this condition results in decreased blood flow uh, from the aorta to the lower part of the body, you know. And initially your body reacts uh, to the reduced blood flow. And the symptoms that occur in the early stages, uh, those may include like uh, dull pain in the abdomen or back that may be hard to pinpoint, you know. And the pain on one side uh, between your upper abdomen or the back, you know, leg pain. A discoloration in one or the both legs, you know, and swelling of the leg, uh, of one leg, in fact, you know, and maybe intense abdominal pain with the bleeding or maybe the hemorrhaging, you know. So these are the symptoms. And the other symptoms, these are the most important ones, you know. And the other symptoms may be like uh, severe abdominal or the back pain, maybe appetite loss or weight loss, uh, fever, sign of infection, maybe vomiting, you know, and the inability to urinate if there's a blockage, you know. Uh, the, in the uterus are blocked, you know, and uh, maybe impaired limb movement, you know, uh, and the inability to think clearly, you know, and uh, uh, low level of red blood cells, which is called anemia, you know, and maybe the kidney failure. So these are the less common symptoms, you know. The next thing is what are the causes, you know. Well, uh, the exact cause is unknown in about uh, uh, two third of cases, you know. And the age and the gender, you know, uh, are the highest risk factors for the disease, you know. And uh, it occurs most often between the ages of 40 and 60, you know. And it can develop at any age, anyhow. And the condition occurs uh, twice as often in men if compared to the women. It's more likely if your age is 40 to 60 and you are male. Okay, so your risk increases, you know. And uh, it's associated with the end, a specific condition uh, in uh, 10 to 20 percent of the cases, you know. And these include like tuberculosis or maybe uh, actinomycosis, you know, and uh, recent trauma to the abdomen or maybe the pelvis, you know, abdominal or pelvic fractures or tumors, you know. And uh, uh, the disorder can be associated with like any recent surgery 
uh, use of cancer treatments and uh, the certain medications that uh, treat the migraines and the high blood pressure you know so then you are at it increases your risk you know uh, the next thing is about uh, the complications there are the complications associated with this uh, disease uh, vary you know and the size and the location of the excess tissue or the fibrosis growth can cause a damage to various areas uh, served by the abdominal aorta you know and uh, if the condition goes uh, untreated uh, the most serious problems result uh, from the swelling and the blockage of the ureters you know and this may result in the chronic kidney failure and the long term blockage of the ureters which can cause urine backup and the kidney swelling you know so these are the important complications you know so it affects your kidneys very badly you know and uh, uh, the accurate diagnosis requires uh, the use of ct scan or the mri and other imaging tests you know of the abdomen you know and the additional tests like blood tests or the x rays or uh, uh, ultrasound and maybe the biopsy uh, of uh, uh, the kidneys or the those areas involved you know uh, may be necessary to uh, detect and if there is any cancer you know and uh, uh, the once diagnosed then uh, the treatment varies depending on the severity and the location of the fibrosis you know and if uh, you are diagnosed in the early stages uh, you may be prescribed with anti-inflammatory medications uh, corticosteroids and immunosuppressants you know and uh, if you are diagnosed after the fibrosis has blocked one or both of the ureters you know uh, your doctor will need to clear the obstruction and this is done by draining the urine by a stent you know or uh, maybe drainage tube you know inserted through the back and uh, into your kidney you know and this is an invasive procedure you know and a stent may also be uh, run from your bladder through the ureter into the kidney you know but these are the two different approaches you know and uh, in some cases surgery may be required and uh, it may be used to uh, free the affected ureter from the fibrosis or maybe to wrap the affected ureter in fat tissue from the intestines to protect it from fibrosis growth you know and maybe the repositioning the affected ureter away from the inflammation to prevent the blockage from happening it again you know to uh, decrease the chance of recurrence you know and the goal of the treatment is to remove the blockage and repair the affected ureter and prevent it from happening again you know so this is the treatment goal you know and for the many people the treatment requires both medication and the in uh, like uh, internal intervention you know okay so these are the two uh, treatment uh, options in fact which will be mostly it will be they, those both will be used you know uh, if the condition is diagnosed and treated at the early stage the long term outlook uh, uh, can be very good you know and uh, when the kidney damage is minimal and uh, surgery is successful there's a 90% chance of long term success uh, but in cases where the kidneys are severely affected and they are damaged you know the damage can be permanent leading to the uh, which sometimes may require the kidney transplant you know or uh, so these are the uh, treatment options you know well the majority of the cases cannot be linked to any specific cause you know so the prevention may not be possible and the condition is uh, associated with the use of some medications to treat the high blood pressure and the medications that uh, those are used to treat the migraines you know uh, so ask your doctor about the possible side effects for those medications you know and uh, to use any alternative medications you know uh, thank you very much for watching this video if you need more information about any disease any medical condition you can visit my website which is www.diseasesandtreatment.com and please do not forget to like, subscribe and share these videos to support this channel. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Goodbye.